Thank you, Peter. It's a pleasure to speak at this forum. I uh, just wanted to check that everyone can see my slides. We can. OK, great. So the work I'm going to talk about today is joint work with Omar Reingold and Vatsal Sharan from Stanford and my colleague, Udi Wieder, who is also on this call. I'm going to be talking about multi-calibration for importance weights. So our motivating problem is what is known as semi-supervised anomaly detection. So this is a problem we face often at VMware. You have measurements from a data center when it's running fine, right? So you have a bunch of data that you've measured while the data set was running well. Now you're seeing fresh measurements from the data center and you'd like to know, is it still running fine or is there something going wrong, right? So you have two data sets. One is a normal curated data set where you know things are okay. The other is the real world and this may or may not be okay. Your job is to find out if there's something wrong. And this problem, you know, if I had to, um, a pithy way to describe it is that all normal points are alike, but every abnormal point is abnormal in its own way. This is a situation which comes up in network security, system monitoring, healthcare, and so on, where it's fine to assume that you have a broad representative sample of what's normal. It's not so okay to assume that you have good examples, labeled examples of what abnormal behavior looks like. Okay, so how do we formulate this as a, pro as a mathematical problem? Let's say that there are two distributions, R and P, which are meant to indicate the real world versus our prior expectations. And we only have sample access to both distributions. You press a button, you can get a sample from whichever distribution you like. Based on this, we're trying to assign anomaly scores to every point, right? Okay, how does this fit our model? Well, the normal points are just the prior distribution. You can think of sampling a random row from the table as generating a sample. And the real world examples are your samples from the other real world distribution. And now we wish to assign anomaly scores to points. So for a minute, let's assume that we knew everything we could know about these distributions. Let's say we actually had their PDFs explicitly. Then how would we solve this problem? Well, in this case, there's a pretty natural solution which pops up, which is to use the importance weights. The importance weight of a point X is the ratio of its probability under R to P. So having an importance weight of 100 means that this point, it has 100 times the probability in the real world that you initially thought it would have, so you better pay attention to this, right? On the other hand, if the anomaly score is really low, it means that you were expecting something and it just didn't show up. This might also be of interest to you. So in this setting, in this very abstract setting, and you know, if you actually had um, access to the distribution functions, there's pretty much nothing else you can do. This seems the most natural thing. It has nice information theoretic interpretations and so on. But now we only have sample access. So how can we go about computing importance weights? Before I tell you that, let me just spend one slide telling you the completely obvious fact that you know, these importance weights are really important in machine learning, statistics, and beyond. Right? There's this whole area of domain adaptation in supervised learning, where the problem is the prior P here represents the training distribution. R represents the test distribution that you'd actually like to make good predictions on. And often these can be different. And there's a long line of work here saying that importance weights are very useful because they might let you reweight the loss function to better represent reality. Importance sampling and propensity scores in statistics, again, vast body of literature. Statisticians have always known, and the rest of us are learning from this election that in any survey, certain populations are either under or overrepresented. And if you have good importance weights, it lets you correct for these biases in your sampling data. Divergence estimation in information theory, this is also closely related to importance weights. Like the KL divergence is in some sense just the expectation of the log of the importance weights. So there's this whole area of density ratio estimation, which essentially is another name for study of computing importance weights. The point here is that you have these two distributions R and P, you don't really need to learn these distributions themselves. What you care about is just the ratio between them, right? That's why the name. And our work also fits in this framework, but most of the work here treats this as some kind of a function estimation problem, that the importance weights, it's some function on the space, let's try and learn this function, right? 
Um, okay, so having told you that this is a broadly interesting problem, what could you do about this? Can you compute importance weights from samples alone? Getting pointwise approximations are pretty hopeless, right? You're just getting samples from these two distributions. I tell you, hey, the importance weight of X is 20. Now, if these are large support distributions, most likely you will not see X in either of your samples. So, you know, it's, it's not, you're not gonna be able to even verify a statement like this. How about setwise approximations? Let's say both these distributions are just drawing balls from some, you know, they're drawing colorful balls, let's say. A statement like the distribution R is twice as likely to draw a red ball than P. This is something you can verify if this event is reasonably likely under both distributions, right? So one thing is you wanna focus on events that are likely enough, but you cannot hope to still get good estimates for every likely event. There are cryptographic limitations here. For instance, if you're just seeing balls, you cannot verify a statement like R is more likely to produce heavy balls than P because you have no way of measuring the weight of these things, right? So the takeaway from here is that we need to think about, even if we are willing to settle for guarantees for sets, we need to assume some niceness properties of these sets for which we're giving guarantees, okay? So what is it we try to do in this work? Well, firstly, we ask this question of what constitutes give importance weights? And we put forward a candidate notion for when our importance weights good. So our notion, it's different from the existing literature. It's inspired by classical notions like indistinguishability in complexity theory, and some very recent work in the machine learning fairness literature that Michael Kim just talked about. And one important thing here is that we don't want to restrict the distributions P and R in any way. Instead, we are going to restrict the class of statistical tests or sets for which we are hoping to give a guarantee. Right? The high level idea of what we try to achieve is to define importance weights. I have a typo on this slide. We want to define a reweighting of P that gives us a new distribution Q, which even though it's not exactly equal to R, it looks just like R to every test in this set. So these things are practically indistinguishable. This is what we are going for, right? So here are the rules of the game. You have these two distributions P and R on a certain domain. What you're allowed to do is to partition this domain into regions. And what you're going for here is to partition it into regions where you think all the points have roughly the same importance. And that's it. Once you find the partition, you are done. Thanks. So every point in the same partition is going to get an equal weight, which is the importance, the right importance weight for this whole partition, right? So this defines a new distribution. It's a distribution where you first sample a partition according to R, but within the partition, you sample according to your old prior distribution P. And these partitions, depending on the partitions, you can get R, you can get P, you can get a lot of things in between. So what kind of partitions do we want? Firstly, we want partitions that only have a few sets. Secondly, we want the resulting distribution to be indistinguishable from R to every test set in our collection that we are interested in. We say it's multi-accurate if this distribution the probability that you land in a test set T is the same as it would be under R. So this is the way of saying that no test in this collection can distinguish from this distribution versus R itself. This notion we call multi-accuracy. A much stronger notion, so okay, just for a picture, here is a set and we are hoping that the, the weight that it gets is the same under Q as it would be under R. We want this property not just for a single set, but for every set in the collection. That's where the power comes from. A more, a more uh, stronger guarantee is this notion of multi-calibration. In multi-calibration, what we ask for is you take a test set and now it gets partitioned into different regions which have different importance weight. An auditor comes by and asks you, why did this portion of T get this importance weight? You can justify it by saying, well, if I gave these points an important weight of 10, then if you look at all these points together, all these points in T that have an importance weight of 10, 
they are 10 times as likely under R as they are under P. So while I'm not sure point-wise, on average, we've done the right thing. And we're able to say this simultaneously for every test and for every importance weight in our partition. Fine. Okay, so, okay, just to wind up here, uh, this is an unsupervised anomaly. It's an unsupervised notion, an analog of the notion of multi-calibration that Michael Kim just talked about. And what we show here is that this gives you some really nice applications to things like anomaly detection, divergence estimation, and fairness. You can get surprisingly small partitions that have nothing to do with the class of tests you're trying to fool. And these are computable efficiently, assuming that your class of tests is learnable. Let me just end by saying that we are VMware Research and we are based in Palo Alto, nice campus. Nobody goes there anymore. Woody and I are on this meeting and we are happy to talk to you anytime. Thanks a lot.